G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. Now, in a recent video, I talked about my opinions on some colour morphs around the world and whether we should or shouldn't breed these animals. And uh, one of the things that people were sort of surprised to hear is that here in Australia, we can't keep exotic reptiles. So some of these animals I was talking about aren't actually legal to be kept in Australia. So today I thought I'd do a video on three reasons why exotic reptiles are illegal in Australia and why it's probably a good idea that it stays that way. Stick around, guys. So, the first reason why we can't keep exotic reptiles here in Australia is because of the risk of them becoming an invasive species. Here in Australia, pretty much everything we've brought to the country is feral somewhere in Australia, from horses to donkeys to camels, cane toads, carp, all sorts of things, you name it. If we've brought it to Australia, it's a problem somewhere. And reptiles would likely be no exception at all. A lot of reptiles from overseas stand a very good chance of establishing themselves in Australia and becoming an issue for our native wildlife, who have evolved in isolation for millions and millions of years, thanks to us, of course, being an island. Now, the most famous example of a, a pet reptile becoming an invasive species around the world is probably the Burmese python in the Everglades in Florida. And what a lot of people start jumping up and down saying when you talk about this example is that, oh, but it wasn't pet keepers. It's not that we released them and, and got sick of them. They got out. And it's true. Genetic studies have since shown that the vast majority of the adult Burmese pythons in the uh, Everglades National Park probably descend from one location. And it's believed that this was a breeding facility that was destroyed a couple of decades ago now during a hurricane, Cyclone Andrew. Uh, and it basically picked up all these baby snakes and dumped them out in the Everglades and they survived from there. Now, while it does take the pressure off keepers as far as not being irresponsible, it doesn't mean that there's no risk with keeping private pets. You see, this breeding facility wouldn't have existed if it wasn't for the fact that the Burmese python is such a popular pet. People don't breed them for no reason. And if anything, it goes to show that even when people are being responsible and trying to house these animals properly, that things beyond our human control can happen that results in these animals being released, such as a natural disaster. So no matter how careful we are, there is always the risk that these exotic reptiles, if we kept them, could get loose into the environment and start breeding up from there. Now, what a lot of people who are proponents of the idea of keeping or legalizing exotic reptiles in Australia will argue is that a lot of the reptiles that we keep in Australia aren't gonna be kept in areas that they're actually native to. The black-headed python, this guy here, is a perfect example. The nearest black-headed python to me is thousands and th thousands of kilometers away. They're not native to Victoria, and they're very common as pets. So could you argue that a black-headed python is just as exotic as a boa constrictor? Well, he might be, but the risk of him surviving in the wild is not the same as it would be with any reptiles from overseas. And the reason we can make this assumption is because this guy being native to Australia, while he might not be found here, He's had millions and millions of years to basically disperse as far as climactic conditions will allow. So it's a pretty good assumption that if this area was suitable for black-headed pythons, they would have already made it here. The reason that they aren't found down here is it's too cold, it's too wet, it's not the habitat that he's looking for. Because he's had the ability, there's not any barrier stopping him getting here, but he's not found here. It's because he wouldn't survive and he wouldn't thrive here. Reptiles from overseas, however, we can't guarantee this. They haven't evolved in Australia, they may well survive in a certain area, and that, therefore it's just simply not worth taking the risk. So this theory that native animals have a less invasive species risk because if they could survive somewhere, they'd already be found there, is uh, the same reason why some of our states have different wildlife laws than others. Tasmania, for instance, the island down the bottom of Tasmania, you can only keep native reptiles because there's a filthy big ocean between Tasmania and the mainland of Australia. So some of our species may well survive down there, but they couldn't get there because there's a physical barrier, an ocean. So they've said you can only keep native species. Another example is Western Australia, over the west coast of Australia, surprise, surprise, only allows native species to Western Australia. And while they're not separated by an ocean, they are separated by thousands and thousands of kilometers of arid country. 
So something like this diamond python, for instance, found on the east coast of Australia, we don't know if it could survive in Western Australia or not. There's habitats over in the south end of Western Australia that may well be suitable for this girl. So they've said that you can't keep this species over there. Now, when you consider Australia's conservational record thus far, we're leading the world in mammalian extinctions and we're not far behind in avian extinctions, and how bad invasive species have become in Australia is a pretty solid argument for not allowing anything from overseas to be kept and bred and traded by private people here in Australia. So for now, it's definitely just gonna be natives. So that's number one. We don't wanna have any exotic pests get into the wild. The second reason that we can't keep exotic reptiles in Australia is it would almost certainly increase the amount of animals being smuggled into Australia. Now, at first, you sort of think, well, if it's legal, why would people smuggle them in? But the thing is, keeping exotic reptiles in captivity and allowing the import of exotic reptiles are two totally different arguments. If in a hypothetical situation the government was to allow exotic species, they're probably not going to let them come in. They're going to be saying anybody who's got them illegally at the moment can own up in an amnesty and keep them from there. So they are already around the place, but it doesn't mean they'd be letting things come in. Now, why would this mean suddenly stuff would be coming in from overseas? A big reason is colour morphs, like this fella here, Olaf. In a Scales and Tails article, one of the reptile magazines we used to have here in Australia, in 2010, there was an article called Exotic Reptiles in Private Hands, where the author basically discussed the fact that 95% of the exotic or illegal reptiles in Australia are actually bred here in Australia after talking to people who, who keep some of these animals. They're not coming in. Because you can't advertise these animals, they generally don't have the high value that some of these animals that can be advertised on the free market can. So because most of these animals are being bred here while they're available, we almost certainly don't have the wide diversity of colour morphs that are available overseas. If suddenly, for instance, we said, all right, you're allowed to start keeping corn snakes, and let's say there's one or two mutations or a dozen mutations of corn snakes or ball pythons illegally being kept here in Australia. How long do you think it's gonna take before magically the hundreds of colour morphs you have overseas happen to be bred over here? They're gonna be brought over because suddenly now they're worth money. So if we allow people to start keeping exotic reptiles, we're only opening the floodgates for people to smuggle in all these other exotic reptiles and try and argue that they were bred here and born here all along. So that's the second reason. If we allow people to start keeping exotic reptiles now, we're essentially opening the floodgates for all sorts of animals to be smuggled into the country and traded on the free market, which is not going to be a good thing. So the last reason why we can't keep exotic reptiles in Australia is the risk of bringing diseases into the country. And this is kind of tied to the second one. If we start keeping them, people are gonna start bringing them in. And already, most of the diseases that captive reptiles suffer in Australia have probably got here through reptiles being smuggled into Australia. Strangely enough, it's probably been through native reptiles being smuggled into Australia, where a colour morph has been bred overseas, somebody's wanted to bring it here so they could claim they bred it and start selling them, and it's spread into the private population from there. Now, while it's obviously concerning that diseases could spread through collections and wipe out people's personal pets, the real risk is that some of these diseases from captivity could get out into the wild. And while most of the diseases or viruses that the pythons are currently suffering uh, haven't been found in the wild, yellow fungus, uh, a, an infection that affects bearded dragons around the world, and eastern bearded dragons here in Australia, has recently been found in these guys, the eastern water dragon. So we've got a disease that's almost certainly been brought over from overseas, thanks to smuggling, got into a wild species. And this could affect the conservation of native Australian species. So there's a third good reason. We don't want to bring any diseases into Australia. You see, Australian wildlife in general are pretty susceptible to things overseas. Being an island has allowed us to evolve this wonderful diversity of animals that aren't found anywhere else on Earth. But it's also created a bit of a Noah's Ark where these guys have lived in a safe little bubble. They haven't had to evolve the resistance to not only predators like cats and things from overseas that other animals have evolved to survive, but diseases, things that might not be a death sentence for a species overseas could really hammer native species here in Australia. So we can't keep exotic reptiles because we don't want them getting out into the wild. We don't want to increase the amount of smuggling coming into the country. And last of all, we just can't afford to have any diseases from overseas brought into Australia and get out and affect our native populations. Australia is the reptile capital of the world. We have an amazing diversity of reptiles, and while there's beautiful reptiles in every country of Earth, the risk just doesn't match the gain. It's too risky, 
and there's really no reason not to appreciate the reptiles we've got. You want to see boas and things like that, we can go to the local zoo and have a look. But we're spoilt for choice with reptiles we can have. So there you go. That's three reasons why I think that we're never going to be allowed or we shouldn't be allowed to keep exotic reptiles here in Australia. But let me know what you think. Other than that, I hope you've enjoyed the video, and if you haven't, guys, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, or like us on Facebook, wherever you watch our videos, and if you want to help out the channel, support us on Patreon, where you can contribute to our bringing our videos out even more regularly. And the last thing is Wicked Wildlife now have t-shirts. There's a couple of different designs with a couple of different logos and animals on them, so check out wickedwildlife.com for more information about that. Other than that, guys, be nice to wildlife, have a good one, and take care.